Oof, okay, that was a lot. I'm completely aware. So, so, so let's go through it again. Summing up. The digital divide can be seen as a special case of a much broader logic of diffusion of innovation through social networks. And what we do here is we just like at one point take a picture and we create a separation between the haves and haves not in this game of digitalization. So we say some are already included in the digital age and others are not. And then there are different perspectives that we can look at this entire dynamic. So we have, we first have to ask the question, who are we actually talking about? Who are we interested in? Countries, organizations, individuals, and what are the characteristics that matter while this innovation diffuses? Then we see how are they connected? So is it just access? Is it usage or is it real impact? And what kind of technology are we actually talking about here? There are many different technologies. And, and I said, one way to go about it is you just group these technologies all together and say, I don't care if it's mobile or fixed or broad, we just count the number of kilobits per second, you add it all up, you just have one indicator. And then this actually becomes a gray zone because it's nowadays it's not anymore about do you have or don't you have access? Everybody has a mobile phone basically. So it becomes more a question of do you have more or less access and how much information flow is actually justified for you not to fall under this digital poverty line, for example. Now, when you look at it this way, you see that there are many different perspectives you can take on the digital divide and people do take very different perspectives. Uh, so, so I've been hanging out a lot at the conferences and also talking a lot with policymakers about the digital divide and you hear often contradictory messages also when you read the literature. Some people, for example, say the digital divide that is closed. Everybody has a mobile phone now. It's all great. We can all go home all done. Other people say, no, the digital divide is widening in terms of bandwidth and it will always continue to widen because of the bandwidth, the kilobits per second divide between people. And a third group says, it doesn't really matter how much access you have to information. It, 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 it matters, what matters is the usage. Do you really use it? Do you really benefit from it? Or do you just have access for fun? So you hear very different opinions about is the digital divide closing? Is it widening? And it can be really confusing. Now, think about it this way. Um, if you just have, you follow our framework, you just have different, three different people who study three different kinds of subjects. So one studies countries, the other one organizations, the third one focuses on with individuals. And they study four different attributes, for example, income and geography or whatever, and three different ways of levels of sophistication, access, usage, impact, and six different kinds of technologies. So one looks at mobile phone, the other one at tablets, the other one at broadband and so forth. Then you already have 216 different definitions of the digital divide or of di digital development. Of course, it's not surprising that some come to the conclusion that the digital, di digital divide is closing. Others do the conclusion that the digital divide is widening and they're not lying and they also do their statistics very well. It's just they look at it from a different perspective. So that's what's happening. Now, over the years, I have learned that it's actually very useful to embrace this plurality of definitions for the digital divide, the, this plurality of perspectives that you can take on digital development. It is not so useful to say, this is the one definition of digital development or the digital divide and the other ones. No, it is not because ICT are general purpose technologies that can be used for many different purposes. And if you want to use ICT to fight gender discrimination, it might be different as when you use ICT for the inclusion of marginalized children, or if you use ICT for productivity increases, or if you use ICT to improve health services. So the end justifies the definition of the digital divide. So you have to start with a certain impact in mind. So you say, for example, I aim at using ICT to fight gender discrimination. And from that follows a specific definition of the digital divide and, and what's useful for you and what's not useful for you. What follows from there is given my goal that I have in mind, the end that I have in mind, who with which characteristics 
connects how to what, or normatively speaking, given the desired impact that I'm aiming at, who with which characteristics should best be connected how to what. And then you have your personalized definition of the digital divide or digital development. And that is also extremely useful because as there is a plurality, uh, a myriad of different impact areas for ICT, there naturally should also be a plurality of definitions of digital development.